Hi, Peter. We have today uh, Peter Burgess from Echo2. Uh, Echo2 is our first biochar supplier from Australia. We are very happy uh, to have him here. Uh, we know that everyone wants to know about our suppliers. They are the ones that are removing carbon from the atmosphere. And so they have the interesting uh, part at, in Pluto Earth. Peter, can you tell us a little bit about Echo2? And uh, how are you removing carbon from the atmosphere? And what is your concept? The thing that got us started was the very large amounts of biomass that's wasted in Australia. Um, we grow a lot of grain crops in Australia, and we also grow a lot of tree crops. And so each year there's several million tonnes of, of the straw that's left after the, the grain is harvested um, and, and timber that's left after the forestry plantation is harvested and it's piled up and burned basically. And so all of those low, what would be called low value residues, our ambition was to turn that into bioenergy that can be used for heat or electricity um, and perhaps hydrogen, hydrogen production um, and, and biochar. Biochar is a um, very stable form of charcoal that can be used for many purposes. Um, it, it's, it's used in farming and horticulture to, to, um, to keep nutrients in the soil, um, to reduce the use of uh, artificial fertilisers, and also to drought-proof the, the soils, which is very important in a country like Australia that is very short of rainfall. We started in 2007, and it took us until 2018 when we built our first commercial plant, which is the one that is featured on the Puro website. And then we met Puro in Helsinki in 2019 and realised that this, this method of um, somehow valuing the CO2 that is locked up in the, in the biochar, where it's locked up for perhaps thousands of years, we know it's locked up for hundreds of years, there's, there's evidence from South American charcoal that, or biochar that was made by the Amerindians um, before the conquistadors arrived, that, that perhaps the carbon, most of the carbon, will last in the soil for thousands of years. So when, when Puro came along with this idea of putting a value on the CO2 um, and, and finding companies and maybe even countries that are interested in becoming carbon net zero, we thought this is a way that will accelerate what we're doing. So we've got this first commercial plant operating now and anyone who's watching this website, if you want to come and see it in South Australia, it's, it's open to the public um, for people to see. And, and there, it's, we're, we're very proud of it because we're using recycled wood, um, so wood that would have otherwise been burnt, um, and that is provided by an organics recycler to a glasshouse operator. And the glasshouse operator was just looking for heat and was previously using fossil fuels to supply the heat. And so we now supply the heat by pyrolyzing the, um, the, the recycled wood in Echo 2. Out of that comes a, a clean hydrogen rich syngas, which we burn in a, in a boiler. Um, that provides hot water for the glasshouse. The biochar goes back to the organics recycler, um, who, who's a large composter. So the biochar goes into composted products and from there back into the into farm soils and, and horticultural soils. And so there it will, be, as I said, it will last in the in the environment for many hundreds, perhaps thousands of years, and have all sorts of other auxiliary benefits. Now that we've got this first commercial plant running, um, we 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 started looking for other um, commercial partners to do more of these projects, and we found about a hundred in Australia. I've now got a, a database of 100 people who've contacted us with different applications, such as the HoloFresh application. And with, because this is new, because, because this whole circular economy idea where we're using the waste from one process to provide firstly energy to another process and then biochar, which most people haven't heard of, it's actually quite complex for, to, act, to actually come up with the commercial arrangements to enable that because generally there's two or three or maybe four companies involved. We, we were fortunate in this first case that 
the organics recycler was happy to take the biochar. So that was a natural circle that from the supplier of the wood to the taker of the biochar. Um, and, and they just happened to be nearby the glass house that needed the heat. But in a lot of cases, there may be some distance between the those who are going to use the biochar and those who are supplying the wood. And so we we decided that my company, Rainbow Bead, which which created Echo2, will build own and operate these facilities as, as we um, develop some of these hundred projects that we think are ahead of us. And, and one of the hard things to do, because this is all new, um, biochar markets are new, um, the idea of using these, these low value biomass residues is also new. Pe people are just used to burning them. So it, it takes a lot of effort. Um, it takes a lot of commercial effort. Banks are not willing yet to lend money for those sort of projects. And so to have the ability now to talk to buyers of Corks, Bureau's credits, for our future projects will help those, those projects happen quicker. And I think it'll help them happen years quicker. So, so for us, we're very excited about the relationship with Puro and the fact that you've created this market. Um, we'll, we'll put some of these projects up on the website so that um, people can look at them. Um, and then if people have got questions of us, we're very happy to answer them. Thank you, Peter. That was, I think that that was a very uh, good summary of what ECHO2 is doing. It seems so interesting to me, especially the concept of the circular economy, um, plus the carbon sequestration here, you know, taking waste from uh, agricultural um, crop, um, you know, recycled wood, all of that, and then producing renewable energy to heat a glass house. Uh, it seems, it's, it really, really seems so great. I can see it all running. And, uh, and then having the biochar, which is sequestering the CO2 permanently, and then that being put in the soil. So it's a whole cycle. Um, and uh, yeah, and so customers who buy the carbon renewable certificates, the corks, you know, are part of that whole cycle as well. Of course, they are buying the tons of CO2 to neutralize their emissions, but it's really great to see that uh, the cork is actually enabling a lot of things uh, as well. Because this is new, um, it, it's not a problem of the thing won't make money. The, you know, the first project is making money for the owner. Um, it, it, all of these projects that we've looked at, and I said there's a hundred, there are literally a hundred now. Um, to us, they all look like they will make money. And the hard thing is to get started. But with the first one, we found someone who's crazy like us, who owns HoloFresh, who is prepared to take a very big risk on a new technology. And so, and so Ian Stanley and I, we, we all put some money into it. And we got this first one running. And, when, and then when we look around for other companies that might buy the energy or buy the biochar or, buy the, or supply the wood, they're generally different companies and they don't want to do all of those things. And so they would rather we came along with several million dollars and built the plant and then just sold the energy or bought the wood or sold the biochar. So that's our role. So we're now, we've gone from being a technology provider to being a solutions provider. What we then do next is, fine, we find someone to supply wood, take the biochar and so on. We say, will you sign a contract with us? Yes, yes, we've got some of those now. Generally, those companies are small companies. So some of them are not bankable companies, they're new companies that have just been set up to do this. And so to have a bankable company like Microsoft or Shopify, some, you know, someone of that value, sign through Puro, sign with Rainbow Bead or a five-year contract or something like that for that maybe covers the cork for two or five or ten of these modules, is then a bankable contract that we can then go along and it makes it much easier for us to get the finance, get things started. Yeah. And then and then the 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 price we will charge for the corks will be, you know, some number to start with. You know, at the moment at the moment the, the numbers are high. They they surprise me. 
um, in time they have to come down. And so if we can get these forward contracts, it will help us bring down the cost of supplying those calls. These are quite difficult things to finance because all of these um, cost and revenue streams are new ideas. For instance, even, even the biomass that we're using, the, the forestry residues and the, the straw, they're not currently collected. Um, they, they're burned. So we have to set up the logistic systems for doing that. People aren't used to doing that. Um, so this and the, the, the sin gas, the heat, the electricity, and the biochar are all new. So the, the difficulty for us as the creator of these projects is getting finance to do these projects. One, once they're running, they're actually self-sufficient. They don't need large ongoing subsidies or special feed-in tariffs or something like that. They, they will actually be self-sufficient, but they need something to finance them to start. Um, yeah, and, and, then, well. and so for us, um, if, if, if Puro can in fact enable forward contracts where we can present project number two, project number four, project number 10, project number 20, and one of your buyers can say, yes, I'll buy 5,000 corks a year or 10,000 corks a year or whatever it is from that project for five years, if it's a substantial buyer, we can then take that to a, a financier, maybe even a bank, and that will then enable us to finance the project. It, it's that simple. The, the, these projects won't happen. Some of them may happen because they're so good, because there's gate fees, but most of them won't happen without this sort of encouragement to help it happen. It's as simple Great. as that. Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, our mission has always been to mobilize this kind of things, accelerate what you, the suppliers, can do so that there are more and more of these facilities sequestering carbon and uh, and changing the whole economy. I mean, this is what I really like about this, that it's um, the whole concept touches in so many different areas and it's, um, it's green economy as well, right? It's producing jobs in those areas that are green jobs The other thing I'd like to mention too is that the, mm -hmm. I, the bioenergy that, that comes from our process is a gas. It's called syngas. Mm -hmm. Syngas is a, there are many processes for doing this, but most processes produce a dirty syngas that then needs to be cleaned up before it can be used in an engine or a boiler. And so the unique thing we believe we've done with ECHO too is that we've created a process that makes a clean syngas in one process, so it doesn't need cleaning up. The, the beauty of syngas, all syngas, is that it contains quite a lot of hydrogen. There's, there's 14 or 15 percent of the, the syngas is hydrogen. And so another thing that the core money enables us to do is put more money back into research and development. Firstly, so we can just reduce the cost of doing all of this. But secondly, so we can look at things like extracting the hydrogen from the syngas and using that for all the things we know hydrogen might be useful for. Um, so I, I think this isn't the end of the, the circular economy story. It's the start of the circular economy story where we're realising all these wonderful gifts that nature's given us and we've just been you know, burning and perhaps landfilling for thousands of years that we can now start to put people back into rural areas and jobs in rural areas and schools in rural areas. Um, which is, I don't know in Finland whether it's been a problem, but in Australia it's been a very large problem that a lot of our regional towns have been depopulated over the last 20 or 50 years because all the jobs are in the cities, farm machineries have got bigger, um, and, and so these sort of industries don't exist. We, we, one, this is one of the things that drove Ian Stanley and I, the co-founder of Rainbow Bleeder, to create ECHO, to, to enable these sort of um, small industries to exist in regional communities. So we're passionate about it and thanks for helping us.